What's going on, everybody? This is DK Dynamite, and today we're going to be talking about all the changes we'll be seeing in Season 1, some updates you didn't expect, and even more. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, because you're very close to 100,000 subscribers here on the main channel. Really appreciate it. Also, drop a like and turn notifications on to stay up to date with everything going on in Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, Warzone Mobile, and any other future Call of Duty as well. Just as I put up my Season 1 recap video a couple of days ago, Call of Duty themselves did go ahead and market the upcoming World Cup crossover, featuring operators such as Neymar Jr. Jr., Messi, and even Pogba coming at some point during Season 1, probably at the start, but if I had to guess, I'd probably say they'll end up dropping maybe during the middle of the season itself. We got a nice teaser image of their jerseys teasing that they'll end up being playable operators at some point in the future. Now, as I covered in my recent Season 1 video, it was leaked by the Ghost of Hope that an LTM of sorts will be dropping alongside this crossover. It'll probably feature both a map and a mode. It's unclear what that'll entail, but the mode is very likely to be Uplink, which many Call of Duty fans are familiar with from previous installments. Now, we also got a major update to the double XP tokens, which everybody out there thought they were going to receive by buying the Vault Edition, but it was later confirmed that unfortunately, you had to buy the game through the in-game store, not the actual PSN or Xbox Marketplace, to get your hands on those bonuses. But then Call of Duty actually changed their mind, surprisingly, and put out the following statement. We understand there has been some confusion about an in-game exclusive reward for the Vault Edition, therefore we've decided to reward all players that currently own or purchase any version of the MW2 Vault Edition with 10 hours of double XP tokens and 10 hours of double weapon XP tokens. Current owners who have not already received the tokens should expect to see them in their account over the next 48 hours. Very generous of them. Thank God they're actually doing that for those out there that do want to go ahead and grind some camos or for those out there that bought the Vault Edition not knowing how to actually get the tokens themselves. Now, also as a reminder, Charlie Intel went ahead and said there's currently no in-game timer to show how much time is left on each XP token. I'm not a fan of that. However, each token counts down in real time, not game time. So once active, it'll count down continuously even if you're in a lobby or off off of the game. So for those out there that thought that the XP tokens only expire as you're playing in a match, it's kind of like how the previous three CODs have worked well. They'll also expire even when you're just sitting in a lobby. Now today we also got some breaking news that Infinity Ward is hosting another in-person event this week where a select group of content creators will be streaming a first look at DMZ and another early look at Warzone 2 following all the changes that were made to the mode ever since COD Next. Many creators that went to COD Next, such as myself, weren't invited to this one and that's fine. We'll be streaming live here on the channel, doing a bit of a reaction to all the new gameplay that does get showcased. I'm really looking forward to that. Definitely expect a major blog post probably the day of or the day after detailing everything that was changed about Warzone 2 and another big blog talking more about DMZ because by the time the event happens this week, it'll be exactly one week away from the start of Season 1 on November 16th. Couldn't be more excited for that. Thank God we're getting some actual gameplay of DMZ since we've been speculating about the mode for the last couple of months. Don't really know much about the mode apart from what the leaks have been saying. Now, a couple of days ago, a new update for Modern Warfare 2 did go live. It was only about 778 megs on PlayStation, but for some reason it was 40 to 50 gigs on Xbox, and it's still unknown why the update was that big, since really what it was was kind of building the foundation for the upcoming Season 1 patch and fixing various stability issues. So, they put out some patch notes talking about some general stability fixes. They went and said there's a fix for various camels not unlocking during progression, fix frame rate drop issues, address known freezing issues, and overall performance improvements with adding fixes to stuttering and lag problems. Also, a recent NVIDIA hotfix addressed some critical issues, so they said please make sure you're running the game on drivers 526.61. The PC benchmark map has been updated with a more accurate reading of the FPS display. Be sure to follow our friends at Binox for additional updates from Modern Warfare 2 on PC, so that's for those out there that bought the game on either Steam or Battle.net. Now, also an update regarding the hotel multiplayer map. There have been rumors that came out recently suggesting that the map is going through similar legal issues that Grand Prix went through before it became Crown Raceway, and also issues that Museum might be facing since that map still isn't back in the game yet. A recent leaker did say that Hotel will be removed from Modern Warfare 2 after COD League Majors 1. Due to the ongoing legal troubles, active Division is facing from the people who own the building in real life. So it's again not confirmed, don't take that for certain, but I would say that kind of makes sense considering the hotel's recent statement that they're not a fan that the hotel is in a violent game. I'm not sure why permission wasn't granted first before they actually developed the map itself, but that would be sad if the map does get removed very soon because I'm a big fan of it. It was a great map during the beta, still is now, but we'll have to wait and see what's going to happen to that because it'll be pretty crazy that three launch maps have had legal issues. Grand Prix, luckily it came back, Museum still not back, and then Hotel might be going away in the next couple of weeks. So we'll have to wait and see what the future is for that multiplayer experience. But what's funny is that they also put out a statement saying that third person mode got added to Hotel. So the fact they're updating the map at this point, the fact they're adding a mode to it, has me thinking that maybe they're still in hopes that the legal issues will be resolved before the COD League Majors one. So we'll have to wait and see how that's going to work out. But also in the patch notes for the recent updates, now this is really getting us ready for season one. First off, Orion camo fixes. They are saying that the animation in the camo itself 
itself will be made faster. The community still isn't happy about that since it's a little bland in comparison to how animated Dark Matter was a couple of years ago. So I think by season one or even after that, they'll make even more improvements to that mastery camo. But do keep in mind, not many people out there actually have the camo itself. So there's plenty of room for improvement to really make that camo a lot better. I posted a video a couple of days ago talking about how Orion does look on every weapon in the game. People out there in the comments weren't exactly happy about how it looks. But like I said, once more people get access to the camo, once they unlock it, there'll probably be more feedback to encourage Infinity War to make the camo even better. Now, I also feel like people out there won't be going for mastery camos too much until the hardcore mode gets added in, also known as tier one. That's coming out at some point during season one, probably at the start. Hopefully there's no delays to that. But also in regards to weapon balancing. So as you guys probably noticed, the attachment tuning feature has been added back in the game. It got removed shortly after launch because of a bug where if you had four or more attachments, I believe it would crash your game. That's been added back in, but they also confirm in the patch notes, nothing will be changed until season one. They're currently collecting data from attachment tuning and other features with the gunsmith. So definitely expect some major changes to the weapons across the board once the season does begin on November the 16th. But as of right now, they're at least working on the foundation for nerfs and buffs that we're going to be expecting over the next month or so. We also have confirmation that a UI and UX overhaul is indeed coming to Modern Warfare 2 during season one. And I made a video a couple of days ago talking about a leak from Ralph's Valve, somebody who was on the money with leaks about a year ago, but as of lately hasn't been. I told you guys take that rumor with a grain of salt because I highly doubt his info as of lately is accurate, but it looks like that actual report was indeed correct since Infinity War did confirm they're going to refine their UI and will have more details about the UI itself during season one's launch. So I'm curious what changes they'll make, how different will it look? There are some good concept art images going around of what a better menu would look like for the whole COD HQ application, how much better Mono Over 2 could look, how the integration could look with Warzone 2. So we'll have to wait and see what the UI does look like in the next couple of weeks. But thank God that's coming. A lot of people out there are in collective agreement that the UI could use some work. It isn't the greatest. I know it doesn't bother me that much, but I can admit that the UI we had in MW19, even Cold War, was a lot better than what we have right now. So we'll have to give another point to Ralph for this correct leak. And hopefully if he ever leaks anything else about Modern Warfare 2, it also is as accurate as can be. Now also, the multiplayer ping system is still not live in multiplayer, but it was mentioned that that'll be fixed by season one. The reason why that has been removed from the game is because of the wall hack exploit from a couple of weeks ago. As I showed you guys in that video a couple of weeks ago, there was a really weird glitch where if you ping somebody then die, that ping would stay above the enemy's head even after death. So it was literally a wall hack exploit of sorts that was really breaking the multiplayer. But also with keyboard and mouse players, it looks like they can still ping danger on enemies, but for controller, pinging is completely removed. So I know it's a feature that's still available for spec ops, but in terms of the multiplayer, we'll have to wait a couple of more weeks to actually get that feature back in the game. Now, the last thing I'll mention is how comprehensive these new patch notes are. People out there have compared these patch notes to the vague ones we used to get during MW19. The lack of communication that season wasn't the greatest, and people out there were frustrated, but it was the likes of J-God, Exclusive Ace, other creators out there that really focused on stats that came out with the best breakdown of what was changed in the game. I'm not saying we still can't have those awesome creators bringing us the actual secret details of what changes every update, but it would be better to have Infinity Ward fully describe what is being changed nerfed and buffed every single patch but if they continue down with the line of MW19's form of communication it's going to be a really interesting year when it comes to reading the patch notes what changed what didn't but hopefully they improve time after time every season so that we get the most clear patch notes possible we're not relying on watching YouTube videos to really figure out what actually changed in the game but that is about it this has been DK Dynamite leave our thoughts down below in the comment section what are your thoughts on the season 1 pre-patch for Mono Warfare 2 multiplayer what are your thoughts on the marketing for the World Cup crossover and also what are your thoughts on the XP tokens being given out to all Vault Edition owners. Really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out, everybody.